Okay, to Newcastle, who are closing in on their third signing of the summer, Tino Livramento. Eddie Howe has been facing the media this morning, and we can cross live to Peter Stevenson, who's there for us. What's Eddie Howe had to say on this potential new arrival then, Peter? Uh, he's not given us a huge amount of information, but you get the feeling that that deal is very, very close to uh, completion. What he has had to say, it's been really fascinating, nearly half an hour we spent with him. He says, and Newcastle fans will be delighted by this, that it's going to be a memorable season for Newcastle United. Of course, not only chasing another top four finish in the Premier League, but Champions League football as well. They've had a really tough pre-season. And he says that's been deliberate because they've got a really difficult opening three games in the Premier League. This weekend, uh, they've got Fiorentina and Villarreal in a double header at St James's Park to get them back, they hope, nearly into top gear, ready for that Premier League start. Uh, Eddie Howe's had a lot to say about players coming in, players going out, and prospects in general for Newcastle United. Let's have a listen to a flavour of what he's had to say. It'd be good to, for fans as well in this tournament. There's two games over the weekend, good for fans who maybe haven't, didn't have the chance last year to get in as well and watch the team. I think that's the beauty of the two games, back-to-back uh, -back days, um, the ladies' games as well. I think it's going to be um, hopefully a great spectacle. Hopefully the weather um, is OK and, and kind on us uh, and the supporters. Um, but I think we will no doubt get a, a really good support. Hopefully there'll be a really good atmosphere and I'm hoping for two really good performances. Playing two European teams, is, that, is it a good taste of what might be to come for the, in the Champions League campaign, playing two European sides? Yeah, I always enjoy pre-season for that thing where you're playing teams that you wouldn't normally play. Now, this year's been slightly different. We had the three Premier League games, which I think when we're back here now were, were really good tests for us. I think it lets, lets us directly know where we are and how we need to improve and where we need to improve. But the European tests are, are slightly different, uh, different styles. Now we're playing two teams from different leagues. So, um, yeah, really good rehearsal for us. It was reported yesterday that the deal was confirm with Tino Livermore from Southampton. Are you able to confirm anything about that? I'm not. I'm slightly in the dark on that, unfortunately. So um, let's wait and see what happens in the next couple of days. But um, certainly I like the player. Uh, just last one for me. Elliot Anderson had a really good pre-season. What sort of impact do you think he could have this campaign? Well, hopefully a big one. I think Elliot has done really well in pre-season. He's come back very fit, looks very motivated, um, scored goals. Um, I see a lot of aspects of his game improving and developing. Got high hopes for him, really like him. Um, yeah, we've got a load of games this year, so he's got a big part to play in our squad. Eddie, you said you were slightly in the dark about Tino, um, but he's a player who's had a, a serious ACL injury. How, how concerned as a manager are you when, when you, you're linked with a player like that who's had such a, a bad injury like that? Without talking directly about Tino, just, just on the general subject of your question, I think that's why we do thorough medicals and you know that will be down to um, that aspect of the, the football club to make sure any player that we sign is in good physical condition. In terms of the balance of the squad, how, how do you use this weekend? Is it a weekend for a lot of chopping and changing or are you, are you very close in your own mind now to knowing what your starting eleven is going to be against Villa? No, there's still time, you know, there's still a, a, another game, there's another week of training, so we will use the game to try and play two balanced 11s, try and put two competitive teams out there. Um, I'm not fixed on one team for Aston Villa yet. Um, this is everyone's chance to show me. A lot of attention on you you and the club, of course, this season because of what you achieved last season. How, how difficult is your man management job now? Because as more and more players come in, you can only play 11, obviously. Is, is that becoming a, a difficult decision this season now as to who gets the start? I don't think we have a, a, a bigger squad than last year. If anything, we have maybe at this moment in time a leaner squad. So I don't think necessarily that's a, a problem. We've got more games. So hopefully everyone should feel more involved with more opportunities to play. Certainly we're going to need everybody. We needed everybody last year. Um, majority of players in the, in the squad got a, a chance to play uh, and contributed to our success. If, you, if your squad numbers are slightly concerning and you've got Champions League football as well, are you going to have to do a little bit more shopping in the next couple of weeks? Is that a priority? Uh, no, I, I said leaner. I didn't say um, there's sort of a, a negative connotation to that. We, we don't want to carry a huge squad. and We want everyone in the squad to feel like they have a part to play. Um, but certainly we do have 
um, the various competitions that we're involved in. And so we need to be robust enough to deal with that challenge. Um, let, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, I think maximum a couple of players, but uh, let's wait and see. You'd be happy to go with what you've got, if need be? Yeah, I, will, I would always say that. I think we we have a very good squad when everybody's fit. The, the problem is guaranteeing that fitness for, for everybody throughout the season is the problem. You can't do it. You know you're going to get injuries at, at some stage. So we have to have the, the depth to deal with those problems. And you've had the, the Premier last night. You've got the two games to come this weekend. What's the level of excitement now and anticipation? It's nearly here. Uh... Well, I'm sure with the supporter base, I think the excitement and expectation and, and everything that goes with the new season is, is huge and is really high. I think from my perspective, I'm ticking off the days. You know, it's it's a busy schedule at the moment. Uh, I want two really good performances this weekend. I want to try and come through with a clean bill of health and then we're prepared for Aston Villa. Thank you. Andrew? Hey, um, we've said goodbye to Alan Sam Maximan. Um, how much are you going to miss him? I was actually just having a conversation yesterday um, with the staff, just saying that I do miss Alan and I miss uh, managing him and, and uh, working with him. And uh, the, the, when you're working with a player for that length of time, you, you build a, a rapport and understanding together. And he was a player that I, I loved the, uh, the ways to try and make his game better. So yeah, I do miss him and I think the, the squad would feel the same. Interesting one for Eddie Howe. I think what he, what he has to recognise is that there's huge anticipation uh, in, with this club at the moment. The supporters are really, really excited. They thoroughly enjoyed last season and that return of Champions League football just really whets the appetite you, you sense among the supporter base. But it also means, he says, that Newcastle are now a target. Everybody has seen what they achieved last year, so maybe sides will, will raise their level when they come to play against Newcastle United. And it is a really difficult start. They got Villa, then they've got a visit to uh, champions Manchester City and then Liverpool at home. So three really challenging opening games but Eddie Howe can't wait. I think the bottom line is maybe he'd love another couple of new faces in but as he says there, we'll have to wait and see.